guys, thanks for joining me today. We are going to be making the Parker on the Porch Pen Keeper Zipper Bag Planner Band. This is super cute. You can add pens in it. It's just a really cute bag. I like to add, make one of these and add it to a notebook and put some cute pens in it for teachers. It's a cute gift for your teenagers, anything going back to school. Super cute gift for friends. Okay, we are going to be making this. I'm going to be, there's two different sizes that you get. You get a standard size, which is this one, and then they get you, there's a bigger size, and I will show you that later after we record. I'm just going to go ahead and record how to do the cheater method. There's a cheater method. There's an enclosed seamed and an exposed seamed um, version. I'm going to show you the cheater method real quick. It's a fast way to use cute fabric and you only have to use one um, pattern of fabric. And I'm going to go ahead and get started and show you this method and then I will show you the other sizes and talk through the other ways to do the other ones. But I'm going to sew through the cheater method of the standard size planner band. Okay. So let's get started. We're going to need one hoop. This is five by seven, one sheet of tearaway. Make sure you have tearaway on here. Okay. And then you need one fabric. I'm going to go ahead and stitch the first step so I can show you what size fabric you need. So go ahead and bring your hoop over to your machine, load your design and stitch the very first stitch step. I will bring you over there and show you. Okay guys, I am on my machine. I am running the Baby Lock Meridian machine if you're interested. I have the design loaded up. I'm gonna go ahead and stitch the very first stitch step directly on to my um, tear away. And I use one color thread through the whole entire project. This is a really fast project if you're gonna go ahead any of them are really fast. Even if you do the enclosed seam, this is a pretty fast um, project. But the cheater method is even faster. It cuts out a couple steps. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch directly on to this tearaway, and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, guys, this is what it looks like right here. It went ahead and did the placement stitches here. These placement stitches will show you exactly where to place your zipper and what size fabric you need. Um, if you like to be told what size fabric you need before you start your project, then you need to open the PDF that came with this file. There's a PDF and it lines out exactly what size you should cut all your fabric. So go there and look there. I'm going to show you how to measure off of the placements, okay? So you're going to need a zipper. Mine's like too long. You can see that it's super long for this project, but I want this gray and I didn't have a shorter one. So you can do as long as you want on your zipper. We cut off the excess later. The thing you need is that it has to be long enough. You need a zipper that's long enough to get past these two placement stitches right here with your foot being able to get by without hitting either your zipper pull or your zipper end down here. That's how you know you have a big enough zipper. But if it's super big, it doesn't matter. You're gonna cut it off in the end, so it's okay. So we are gonna place our zipper first. If you want your zipper to pull this way, you put your zipper pull up here. If you want it to pull the other way, you'd put it down here, okay? So let's get started. I'm gonna write top on here just so we know when we're doing directional fabric and we make sure we're placing it the right direction, okay? So I'm gonna put the top up here. Mine really doesn't matter. You could put this either way if you wanted. The fabric doesn't make a difference. But if you are using directional fabric, I always like to show you which way to do it, okay? So this is the top. So we're gonna go ahead and place our zipper. You can see that there's three stitches here in the middle, right here. You're gonna place between these two stitch lines. If you wanna use the center line right here is if you look under, underneath, there's a center line of your zipper. Like if you open it, you can see that center line right there. Okay, you can line it up exactly on that center line if you want by looking at it upside down and bringing it down like that. Or you can just place between these two lines. I place between the two lines. I think it's accurate enough. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Okay, so I'm just going to line them up between there. Oops. like that and then I'm gonna bring it all the way down making sure that it stays between those two lines 
and tape down here. Okay, so you have your zipper taped. It's gonna go ahead, I'll show you up close. It's gonna go ahead and it's gonna stitch down here and then it's gonna jump the zipper teeth, stitching up here, tacking your zipper to your stabilizer. So I'm gonna go ahead over to my machine and run that and I will come back and show you what mine looks like. Okay guys, this is what it looks like right here. It went ahead and tacked down our zipper. You can take that tape off now. You can see that it's taped down, or the tape's gone. So it's tacked down. We're gonna go ahead and measure fabric from the zipper teeth over on both sides, okay? So we are gonna get started. This is the fabric that I'm using in here. This is Emma and Mila um, fabric right there. I got it a really long time ago, so, but I just want to tell you who it was by. It didn't say, like, what it's called or anything that I can see. It might be cut off. Let me see the other side. Yeah, it might be cut off, but that's all I got on there, okay? So that's what I'm using here. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and get started and measure. There is, oops, there's different measurements for um, the different methods of doing this. The fabric, you need different fabric depending on which version you're doing. And I will talk through all of those after I stitch um, this cheater method out. I'm going to go ahead and go straight through the cheater method and stitching it out so you can see how to do this one version of it. And then I will talk through the other ones at the end if you want to stay and listen to the other versions and what the difference would be on stitching it out. Okay, so let's focus on the cheater method and I'll talk about what that is versus the other ones, but we're going to stitch out the cheater method. Okay, so what you need to do for the cheater method is you need to go ahead and measure one piece of fabric on either side from here to here and from here to here and double it. And I do a little extra too. So what you're going to do say we're going to take this side, you're going to measure it. You can see that I have a folded over piece of fabric that's big enough to get past all these stitch lines right here. And then I went ahead and ironed it, folded it, ironed it again, and then I took one sheet of interfacing. This is medium weight interfacing right here. And I only did it on one side over here and I put it onto my fabric and then I folded it to get what I want to do. So I'm gonna show you the interfacing. If you're not familiar with the interfacing, you would take the wrong side of the fabric facing up, and then this is interfacing. There's a rough side and a soft side. You would take the rough side of the interfacing, you would put it down on the wrong side of your fabric, cut it to the right shape, and then you would iron it on, and then that piece of interfacing adheres to your fabric, making it a little thicker. It just makes your bag a little more substantial. It makes it a little thicker. If you want your bag to be a little more um, soft and flimsy, like this, it has like, so it's not flat, soft and flimsy, this would be really flimsy without the interfacing in it. But it's your choice. It would work, especially with this method because you're doubling your fabric. You could, my suggestion would either be to just take your woven fabric and then just double it and put it there or do the one side of interfacing like I have um, done for mine, okay? I would not put the interfacing over the whole thing and then fold it because then you'd have double interfacing and double fabric. I think that will be too thick for this small bag, okay? So go ahead and prep your fabric like that and then you would have one right here and then you're gonna do the exact same thing for the other side. You're gonna measure it, double it, fold it in half, iron it, put one sheet of interfacing on one side, get a clean edge, and then you're gonna go right here. So that is the fabric you need on the front of your bag for the cheater method. Now I'm just going to talk like five seconds about the difference of the cheater method just so you know what we're doing. So when you fold it over like this, your fabric over, you are using this top fabric and this underneath fabric right here as your liner. This will be on the front of your bag and the front of the liner for your bag. You're not gonna be placing a separate liner like in the enclosed method. If you're doing the enclosed seam method, you have front fabrics right here, which we're placing right there. And then on the underneath, we do two other steps that place 
different fabric. You can choose different fabric. So if you want different fabric as your liner, then you need to do the fully enclosed method. And I will talk more in depth to that. This method, the cheater method, the front of your bag and the liner are the exact same fabric, okay? So that's a difference. The one thing I did wanna talk about when you're folding this fabric over, if you have fabric that makes a difference, mine can go either like, so this side, can be this way, but it also could be on this side and it would look the same. It doesn't matter and it looks the same on the inside too. So this fabric does not matter which way you place it. When you're measuring your fabric and cutting it, I just wanna make sure you know this. So when you're putting fabric on this side, you see how this is alphabet? You want that fabric from the top, you want that fabric facing you the correct way. So when you fold over, your fabric, if it has a direction, you're gonna take one side and fold it this way and iron it. And then when you're doing the other side, you have to make sure to fold it this way. You can't fold it, you can't fold it this way again. If you fold it this way again, then both your clean edges are on this side and you can't turn it over else it would be upside down. So when you're ironing and cutting, make sure more ironing, the cutting doesn't necessarily matter, but make sure that you fold this way when you're prepping your fabric so you have two clean edges on the fold going the right direction. It makes a difference on the directional fabric. When you look inside the bag, it's gonna look fine. None of it's gonna be upside down on the fold. It's gonna be fine. It's more about the front of your bag. If you did both of them the same way, you can't turn it that way, otherwise your fabric's upside down. So when you're prepping your fabric, make sure you're paying attention to that. I just wanted to point that out, okay. So we have two fabrics on the front like this. We prepped those, they're all ready to go, so get that prepped. And then what you need for this bag is you need a piece that's big enough to get past the whole bag right here. This is gonna be the back of your bag. And then this, you're gonna iron it and you're gonna go ahead and put um, the interfacing on this as well. The outside pieces of your bag, you do the interfacing. But then you need one liner on the inside. So you already have these two with the front, but you need this liner piece right here. This one you do need to cut, so you're gonna cut the same. You don't have to, but because your liner is gonna be this on the inside, I cut the same fabric, so you want one big enough. This one you just iron, you don't need any interfacing on. So for the cheater method, you need these two pieces that you folded over for the front. You need the back of your bag. All three of these pieces have interfacing, and then you need the bat, the liner, the inside liner, and that's just ironed with no interfacing. This is what you need in fabric for the cheater method, okay? So let's get started. Let's get started stitching it. So the first step's gonna go ahead and stitch around this side over here. So I have my, my fabric lined, all prepped and ready to go. You're gonna go ahead and place this next to your zipper like this, making sure you get past all your stitch lines. I'm gonna go over the machine. It's gonna basically stitch down that exact square that you see as the placement right there. Now, you're at a point in your bag where it matters what color thread you have. I use one all the way through, so when I choose my um, thread color, I choose whatever I want to show as the top stitch right here because it shows right there. Okay, so if you want a specific color showing, go make sure to use the right thread now. Okay, so I'm going to go to the machine. I'm going to stitch this next step and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, guys, that's what it looks like right there. It went ahead and tack that down. Now we're going to go ahead and take our other side with our clean edge. We're going to go ahead and place it on this side. And then it's going to do the exact same thing just on this side. It's going to do that rectangle and it's going to tack your fabric to your zipper and your tearaway. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I will come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, this is what it looks like right here, okay? So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to measure your fold-over elastic. Fold-over elastic is just pretty elastic that stretches. This one has cute polka dots on it. Um, this one has cute little doggy feet on it. You can get decorative and see what it looks like. I use a lot of just solid colors. This is solid, but you can tell 
there is a right and a wrong side. The right side is shimmery here and the wrong side is not shimmery. If you don't like shimmery, you can use this side. It's not a bad option, but just so that you know what's supposed to be intended as the right side versus the wrong side, because I'm gonna show you how to place it here. Okay, so I'm just gonna open this gray. I'm gonna use this gray this time, okay. So I just wanna show you how to measure it first, okay? So there isn't exact measurements for the fold over elastic. There's not in the PDF either. The reason is, is because depending on what you're putting it on, they're all different sizes, okay? You can have a tall notebook, you can have a short notebook, you can have thicker. So it depends on what you're using and what you're measuring it for. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and measure it for this planner. And the way that you do that is you go ahead and take your measuring tape. Okay. And I want it to go this way. So I'm going to measure. I'm just getting it in the middle. Sorry, I hurt myself. I cut the tip of my finger and um, it actually hurts. So I'm trying not to tap with it and I'm not as, things aren't as easy. Looks like I'm struggling to get stuff done. <laughs> I kind of am. Okay, so if you measure this right here, it shows it's about 21 and a half right here. So 21 and a half, you're gonna subtract six and a half from whatever measurement you get for what you're measuring. So if you're measuring something smaller or bigger, whatever number you get, you're gonna take six and a half from that number. So my number is gonna be 15 for mine. And um, that's what you're gonna, oops, I should keep that, huh? That's what you're gonna measure. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this and I'm gonna take my fold over elastic and I'm just gonna measure to 15. Okay, right here, exactly at 15. Now I have what size I need for my bag, my planner bag, and it's gonna fit, it'll fit on this one, okay? So that's how you measure for it. I'm gonna bring you over to the machine because we are doing the cheater method. We're, have, we're gonna skip some steps because we don't have to do the liner. This is what the underneath looks like right now. We have the cutaway on, but when you take this cutaway off, you're gonna have this showing as your liner, okay? This one, um, you don't run the next two steps. So, so I'm gonna show you how to skip it and we're gonna get started. And the step after that is the fold over elastic. So meet me over at my machine. Okay, we were back over at my machine. This is what we look like so far. First, we're gonna go ahead and open our zipper. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that. Okay. You are gonna open it far enough over that you can turn your bag, but not so far over that the foot of your machine will hit it. Here's your placement stitch right here. So you wanna make sure you're in far enough that when your foot goes around this several times, it doesn't hit your zipper pull right here. So go ahead and make your zipper pull over there. Okay, so that's what you're gonna to wanna to do. You wanna make sure your zipper's in there. Open, okay, I'm gonna put this on the machine. Now I'm gonna move this. I'm over at my um, embroidery station and I don't have a tripod over here. I have you on one right now, but it's just the one I use on my desk. So I'm gonna move you to look at my screen real quick and hope I don't make you sick. Okay, all right, so here we are. So what you would normally do next, you can see here, it's gonna do the, um, the liner underneath the bag. Normally what we would do on the enclosed is we'd put the liner underneath right here, just like we placed the top, we would have a clean edge and we put the liner on and then we would stitch that step. Then we would put the liner on this side underneath and then we would stitch that step. But we're doing the cheater method and we already have the liner because we folded it over. So we're not gonna do these. So I'm just gonna hit okay. If you need to get into your steps and stitches, you're gonna find a needle with a plus and minus on your machine. You're gonna hit that and then it brings you into here. Now this shows you your steps we're on step five of 11 up here sorry five of 11 okay if you want to skip entire steps I use these arrows 
If you want to skip stitches within a step, that's with these um, needles. This is minus one stitch, minus 10, minus 100, minus 1,000, plus one, plus 10, plus 100, plus 1,000. That's within a step. So if you were sewing some letters and it messed up and didn't sew very good, then you can go ahead and step back some of the stitches and restitch over that step to make it look better. That's what those are for. We're gonna skip entire steps. So I'm gonna press this arrow down and you can see that we went to, sorry, step six right here. And then now here's the other liner. We're gonna skip both liner steps because we're not gonna do liner. Now you can see right there that it's gonna go ahead and do the placement on the top and the bottom for the fold over elastic. That's what we're doing. I'm just gonna go ahead and move you back over here. See if I can run this. I I really can't run very well because my um, this is gonna hit you as well. So I'm just gonna try to hold it as I show you this. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and stitch the placements. Make sure you have your zipper open. You have to have your zipper open before you run this step. It's gonna go ahead and sew over your zipper teeth here. And then it's gonna go down here. And it's gonna get sew down there. This is your placements for your fold over elastic. Okay, now I'm gonna bring you back over here. And here you can see the next step is gonna tack down your fold over elastic on the top over here. And then the step after that's gonna tack it down here. I'm gonna bring you back to my desk and show you how we place the fold over elastic. Okay, we're back at our desk right here. We went ahead and had our zipper open. We did our placements for our fold over elastic. I'm gonna place this gray, but I wanted to show you with polka dots. You see, there's none on there, there's some on here. You're gonna take the right side of your fold over elastic. Say, for example, there was words too. This isn't, this could go either direction, but say that there was llamas or hearts or something that faced me. You want it to face you correctly. Like if I'm looking at it, I can read it. Then you're gonna flip it over like this. That will make your fold over elastic correct when it comes, when we undo the whole bag, it will be going the right direction. So I'm taking the right side of my fold over elastic. I'm placing it down. It's gonna stitch right here in that exact same spot. So I'm gonna go ahead and place this right here. Now, if I was over, at my machine stitching this, I would just go ahead and tape this one piece and then I would stitch it and then just have this out of the way because once it stitches this, then your machine's gonna move down here and you don't want it to get caught in all of this. So I'm just gonna tape this like so. This is just masking tape just so it doesn't get caught in the machine. So I'm just gonna tape it all down first. Usually I stitch the other side first. Now your other side is gonna be down here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get that. Make sure this is all straight and that you didn't twist it or anything. This needs to be straight. Okay, so I'm gonna bring it down here. And I'm making sure, I'm just taping it so it holds right there, but I'm making sure that my tape is not where it's gonna stitch because I don't want the stitches to go over tape. So I'm gonna tape this down over here too. So I just folded this over because we have excess you know, for this length. And then I'm gonna tape it on the inside of this bag like this, okay? So there you go. You can see that I have just a little bit of overhang past my placements because it's gonna stitch right there. And I did the same thing on this side. It's gonna stitch right here. And then I just taped my inside down so it doesn't get caught in the machine anywhere. So I'm gonna go over the machine. I'm gonna stitch this one down and then I'm gonna stitch the next step and stitch this down and then I'll come back and show you. Okay, this is what it looks like. It went ahead and tacked that down as well as up here, okay? So I'm gonna leave this just like this. You don't need to do anything with it. I'm actually gonna take this end tape off so my next stitches don't end up in this tape, but the center tape can stay and it's gonna hold it down, it's fine. Just make sure your tape's not going over any of your stitches, okay? So this is all stitched down. The next step you're gonna do is you're gonna take the back of your bag, that's the one with the inner facing, you're gonna place it. So if you had directional fabric, 
Let me get these ABCs. ABCs are facing me. You're going to do this. It's going to be like that, okay? I am i don't have directional fabric, but I have the right sides towards me. If I had hearts facing me, I make sure you can read it or whatever. And then go like this. Make sure you get past all your placement stitches. Now go stitch the next step and you're going to stitch all the way around here. Now if you realize that you place this fold over elastic and your zipper isn't open, then you need to take these stitches out and you need to open your zipper and then place it. Make sure your zipper is open before you place your fold over elastic. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put this down. I'm gonna go stitch the next step. It's gonna stitch all the way around your bag and I will come back and show you what that looks like. Okay guys, this is what we look like. It went ahead and stitched all around. This is what your bag should look like right now. So now we're gonna flip our hoop over and we're gonna place our liner. So you're gonna have the fabric. This is the one without inner, any, any inner facing, okay? The right side facing you. If there was hearts on here facing me, I could read it. And then you're gonna go like this and then it will be placed the correct way. Go ahead and just get it lined up how you want. You are underneath your hoop, so make sure you tape this down good. I like to tape corners because corners are always the ones that come up and get into your stitching and then you have to seam rip. Okay, just like that. Now I'm gonna go over the machine. I'm gonna put it on. I'm gonna kind of look to make sure no tape came up and that it stayed flat and straight. And then I'm gonna stitch the very last step. Okay, this is what we look like the top. This is what the underneath looks like right here. Now you can go ahead and take it off of your hoop because we are done stitching. Okay, and then you can take your tear away off. Okay, and then we're gonna cut around it. You can see the hole is right here. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut on either side of the hole like this up to the stitches without cutting the stitches. Leave a little bit. Just gonna cut my corner at an angle, cut across. Once I get to those other stitches where they stop, I cut over and then I cut across to get some of this excess off. And then you, there's not um, a double liner here, but you have one liner and then you have the other piece right here. You want the two pieces on either side of the hole. I'm gonna fold that up so we don't cut it. I'm gonna turn it over so I can see the stitch lines. Now you're gonna cut straight across here because we're just gonna get this excess off. Make sure when you hold your scissors, you're cutting across, not at an angle, because the angle will cut underneath, okay? So keep your scissors straight. And I'm just getting that excess off, okay? We still have our liner fabric. Okay, and I always forget to take this box out, okay? I'm gonna use this Fabric Fuse Peel and Stick tape to close this hole. You can do whatever method you want. There's different glues that work and there's different things. I'm going to use fabric fuse tape. So what you're going to do is you're going to flip through this hole. So I'm just going to be kind of gentle because you don't want to tear the stitches right here. So you're just going to push these through, get the other side, push it through. Okay, and then whatever you use to push your corners out, I just use this. Use the blunt end so you don't push through your fabric, but you're just gonna get these corners out. I'm gonna use this side to get this, but I'm gonna go a little slower so I don't push all the way through. Get this side out. Okay. Now you're gonna go ahead and take the tear away off. This is tear away, so you're just gonna get it started. Mine's kind of a stiff tear away, which is nice because it doesn't leave fuzz behind on the edges. You know, there's some tear aways that are softer and they have like a fuzzy residue after. This is, this doesn't leave all that fuzzy residue, but it is a little harder to get started. 
So you're just going to get all of this off. Okay. Cut this. You're going to have your placement stitches right there. I just cut through one of the placement stitches so I could pull this over. Okay, I'm gonna cut the other placement stitches in these. Okay, now you can see that it's gonna pull the zippers open, so it's gonna pull this out. I'm just cutting these stitches. Tear it. Okay, once you have all your tear away off, here's just some tape I'm gonna take off. Take it off when it flips. Okay, I'm gonna, there's like some little extra stitch string down here. I'm just gonna cut them. So just clean up your stitches. Don't cut any of the knots or anything that keep it there, okay? So now we're gonna close this bag. You can see there's stitches right here. I put the tape right along those stitches. It's right here. I just take it. And I just put them directly over those stitches. When you get to the end, it just tears. Okay, and then I just make sure that I have it adhering to that fabric. Okay, and then I fold this side in and I fold this side in. You're basically just gonna sandwich it. So get it how you want it. I don't like any of the folds or anything, so I get it exactly how I want it, like that. And then I start peeling up the tape. I just open it up like this, find the edge, make sure if the tape's not pulling, the this isn't pulling up with the sticky on the fabric, then just push down some more until it starts. Okay, and then I just fold it together as I pull a little bit at a time. It's really sticky, so I don't pull it all at once. The end I pull and there's usually like a little bit of it that pulls out the fabric. I just push that back in with the end of this and get this closed. Okay, and then I just rub it down so it adheres to the other side really good. And there you are, it is completely closed. There's no sticky residue. That's all you need to do. So now we're gonna flip it again through this hole. And then I'll show you right now, this is what the inside looks like. So that's, it's fully, um, in, it looks fully enclosed, it's fine. You don't see any stitch lines. You see the stitches on the zipper, but that's about it. Okay, now I'm gonna flip it again. And then I'm gonna get these corners out really good. Okay, and then you can take the tape off carefully. I think the two stuck together. Yeah, that's what my issue is. Okay. I'm just going to zipper it up. And then I would probably iron it. There's your planner band. I'm gonna get a pen. You just put it in. You can fit quite a bit in here. See, that's just one. And then you put it up. Get our planner. 
and we're gonna put it over it. It fits great. Okay, that is how you make the Parker on the Porch Pen Keeper Zipper Bag Planner Man. Okay, and this was the standard size. This was the cheater method, so the inside fabric is the same as your outside fabric. It skips two steps. Okay, now I'm going to take a second and get my stuff together. If you want to stay along, I'm going to explain the difference between the different ones, and I'm going to show you the other size as well stitched out. So stay with me if you want to see the rest of it. There's a few more minutes. If not, you should be able to stitch this out. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much for joining me. Okay guys, let's chat about the different versions here. I was going to show you the differences and what they look like and kind of talk you through the difference in sewing them. We just walked through the cheater method and I wanted to show you the difference between the cheater method and the fully enclosed seam one. I talked a little bit about it. So the cheater method we just finished, which is this one right here. They look pretty identical on the outside. This one you can see, this is the cheater method. It has all the same fabric throughout. Okay, it's really clean. The seams are enclosed right here. The only thing you're gonna see right here is the zipper right underneath and all your fabric's gonna be the same. That's really the only difference, but you get to skip some steps. This is the fully enclosed one. You see the zipper's enclosed right here and you can use a different fabric, okay? That's really the only difference between these two. They're pretty much the same. So I walked you through how to stitch this one. I'm gonna talk about the fully enclosed, um, the fully enclosed one and the differences in the steps. So this is one, we did the placement. I went ahead and stitched the zipper and the fabric you would need for a fully enclosed one, you would prep your fabric like this. On the cheater method, we folded the whole thing in half, we doubled it. This one you would just fold over one little side like this, okay? So you have one, so you're getting a clean edge, but you'd still do the interfacing, so you had one side right here, you would have the exact same thing, one side over here prepped, and then you're gonna have a liner, and you would just fold it over. Remember, your liners are not, do not have the interfacing on them, so I just have one right here, basically just doing the opposite, and then you would have another one. So this would be liner, and this would be liner, and then you would have the back of your bag, which would have interfacing, so that would be the back of your bag. And then you'd have your last piece of liner, which is no interfacing, okay? And the way you would put this together, I'm just gonna talk about it real quick. You would do the placement, you would do the zipper, then you would stitch this side first. It's pretty much the same as the other one, but then you'd stitch this side. So say these are stitched down, then you would flip it over and you'd be stitching this side, so you would just take the folded edge of your liner and you'd place it the same way you place the other one. You wanna make sure that you, um, on your interfacing, this one is cut away. When I do a bag that's fully enclosed, you don't get your stabilizer out of the inside of the bag. So I go ahead and use cut away, and then I just cut my zipper spot out. Um, the other versions, you need to use tear away. So your exposed seams, you need to use tear away. And the cheater method we did, you need to use tear away. You can't use cut away. But if you're doing a fully enclosed one, you can use tear away, but you will hear the tear away inside of the bag because it doesn't come out of the inside of the bag. So I use cut away on the fully enclosed one. So that's what this is, is cut away. So basically you would do one here and then you would do the other side here and then all of that would be stitched down, okay? I would actually, once your zipper's down, I take a pair of scissors. Let me see if I can find a pair real quick because I have stuff everywhere. 
and I actually cut out where my zipper is now. Now you're gonna cut out this middle piece. Careful not to cut your zipper. I like to do this now before you place your fabric because it's easier to accidentally cut your fabric doing it at the end. So I do it now before the fabric's placed, okay? So go ahead and stitch your placement, then stip, stitch your zipper. And if you're doing fully enclosed, which is what we're talking about, sorry, it moved. Cut this little piece out right here, okay? So we have all our, then you do this, you do this, and then you do this underneath, and then you do this one underneath, okay? Once all of that's done, then you're ready to put the back of your bag on. So you would open your zipper, once everything's on, you'd open your zipper, and then you'd do your placement for your fold-over elastic. Then you would place your fold-over elastic up here and right here. Then you'd put the back of your bag on, and you'd stitch around. Then you would turn it over, and you would put your last one on like this, okay? And when you do your liners, you are doing them up like this, okay? Facing where you'd wanna see them. The liners would be like this. They'd be placed right. And then when you put your back liner on, you'd be going like this, okay? So they all would be facing you the right way, okay? That's how you would do, and then you just do all those steps and then you would cut it and then you would have this right here, okay? Now I like to do, um, I like to put cute little things on mine. So this is the bigger one I wanted to show you. Here's the standard size. We made the standard size right here. So here's the standard sizes. This is the next size up. There's only two sizes, so this is the bigger one. So if you like the bigger one, I wanted to show you what that looked like. I like to put them on cute notebooks. This is a really cute notebook. And then I like to make this cute little charm. So these are Parker on the Porch designs as well. This one is the pencil rainbow charm. It has a keychain snap tab as well that comes with it. So you can make a keychain or the little charm. I made the charm. And then this one right here is one of her newer designs. This is the Squad Alpha monogram charm. I think it looks super cute on here. You go ahead and put this on a notebook and then I like to put some markers inside of here like that and you have a perfect teacher gift. So school's coming up and this one's ready to go for one of the teachers, okay? You could also add a gift card inside if you wanted to. So this is super cute. I just wanted to show you this is the bigger one right here, okay? So we have that one. So we, I showed you how to do the fully enclosed, talked you through it. We stitched through the cheater method. Now I'm gonna show you the exposed seam which is done with like a vinyl okay so here is an example of an, a vinyl exposed seam this is the thinner one you can see it's a little poofier because it is vinyl but that's what this one looks like okay i'm going to open it and show you what fully um exposed seams looks like so there's no liners in this one okay so this one is stitched a little differently. You'd go ahead and do your placement. You would put your zipper down. Then you would have a clean edge of vinyl and you'd put one vinyl here. You would put one, the other vinyl over here. So you'd stitch this, then stitch this. Okay, now there's no liners anywhere on this one. So once these are stitched down, then you would go ahead and open your zipper and then you would stitch your placements for your fold over elastic, then you would stitch your fold over elastic down just like the other steps I sh we showed you. Then once all that's done, make sure your zipper's open, then you would take your vinyl. If this was directional, make sure you always can read it towards you. And then you would go like this and you would stitch all the way around getting the back of your bag on and then you would be done and it would so this is going to be the fastest version and the least amount of fabric that you need okay and this is what it would look like right here and then you would have an exposed seam planner band it's super cute okay so i talked you through all of the methods 
showed you what the smaller and the bigger one look like, okay? If you have any questions, let me know. And um, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. And then the little bell in the corner lets you subscribe to the channel. So whenever a new tutorial comes up or any postings come up, it will notify you. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you for sewing with me. I will see you in the next one.